Um, so this is, I've just started a postdoc project on this. Um, so I'm not going to be showing you anything interesting. Um, <laughs> no, so basically the whole idea is to set up a national working group on alien grasses uh, in South Africa. So just to uh, introduce you to the idea of alien grasses um, in a global context, I found this very cool picture. Um, this paper in 1992 by uh, Carlo D'Antonio and Peter Vertuzzi, very highly cited, and basically they were um, the first to highlight the impact that um, alien grasses have had on changing fire regimes um, in many places around the world. So, especially African grasses have had a huge impact in places like Hawaii and South America, etc., etc., on um, increasing uh, the frequency of fires and the intensity of fires in these areas. Um, another really well-known international example is uh, Bromus in the States. Um, so this all over here is Bromus and it's invaded a uh, sagebrush steppe um, all across the Midwest of, of the US and uh, it's really a massive problem over there. So what's the situation in South Africa? And uh, through my literature <coughs> review and uh, looking around, it seems like we're not really that that certain. So that's why we have this very confused little baby over here. <laughs> um, so in 2004, uh, Sue Moulton and a few other people, uh, not just Sue Moulton, sorry, <laughs> published this paper. Um, basically as a review of alien grasses in South Africa and um, she found that there were 113 naturalized alien grass species in South Africa and uh, this really is the, the last update to um, our knowledge of, of, of what we have in, in the country. Um, there are seven car category one uh, grass species in the country and just to introduce you to a few of the, the more well-known ones. So we heard yesterday about Arandodonax. Um, and there has been a, a bit of work by working for water on the species, but it's really a very aggressive invader of our um, riparian systems and around the world. Um, another fairly well-known one is a Penicetum cetacean, uh, fountain grass. And uh, at the moment, this seems to be largely restricted to roadsides in more arid areas of the country, um, but with the potential to, to, to become a big problem in the country. But in general, um, I think we, we know very little about the, the impact of alien grasses in South Africa. So this is just um, an, uh, two papers. And really, when, when I was trying to uh, go through the literature, um, obviously this is not, not everything, but there aren't that many papers on the impacts of alien grasses in, in South Africa. Um, so we know that um, Penicetum cetaceum could be a problem. Uh, we also know that some European grasses are a pro problem in the Feinbos. Um, I, I couldn't actually find anything about Arandodonax, but uh, I mean, there, there may be papers about that. Um, and Working for Water has done very limited work on grasses in general, apart from uh, Aranda Donax. So, um, what does the, the future hold? Um, oh yeah, just before I go on to that, um, the, this might also be that uh, perhaps alien grasses aren't really a problem in South Africa, but I think we don't really know enough about them to actually say that they're not a problem or um, that perhaps we just haven't paid enough attention to them. And definitely in the future I think we, we need to be looking at uh, grasses as, as a potential threat. So there's a lot of movement to introduce um, grass species for biofuels, so miscanthus, uh, etc. Um, we still have a lot of um, pasture grasses being imported and the hay, etc. 
uh, you have unintentional introductions. Horticultural species, so pampas grass is still grown and sold in nurseries around the country. Um, and there are many uh, new species being introduced for, for horticultural purposes. And then I'm going to talk a little bit later about bamboos and the, the, the possible emerging threat of bamboos um, in South Africa. So the whole idea of, um, of my postdoc is to establish a, a national working group, um, as has been done for cactaceae, and it's a really cool looking um, cactus, yeah? Um, and if you, uh, I think this afternoon, Haley Kaplan will be talking about um, the cactus working group. But the whole idea of a, a national working group is to essentially develop a, a national strategy for a particular group of plants. Um, so when I asked John, uh, well, well, what is a national working group, um, I, I really wasn't sure <laughs> what the, the whole aim of it is. but. Uh, so uh, John suggested I look at Brian van Bulken's paper on um, acacias, and that's what I'm going to introduce you to now, just to give you an idea of uh, the, the sort of things that a, a national working group um, should or could do. So um, this was a paper that was part of the um, special issue on acacias in 2011 in diversity and distributions. Um, and the the acacias are a really nice group to, to work with in South Africa because uh, the taxonomy is really well understood, we really understand the impacts really well, um, and they uh, outline this, this uh, potential national strategy for, for this group. So they looked at the, the range and abundance of um, these 16 invasive and naturalized uh, acacia species in the country, uh, they looked at their uses, and they then use it to categorize these, these species. So you can see here on the x-axis you have the, the value of the benefits of the species and they use uh, area invaded as a measure of the, the impact of, of the species. And you can then group the species into these, these different categories. Um, they then outlined a, a number of management tactics for um, the different categories of species, so prevent introduction, eradication, containment, etc., etc. I'm not going to read it all out to you. Um, and associated with management tactics, they have uh, they suggested a whole bunch of management practices, so risk assessment, EDRR, uh, mechanical and chemical control, etc., etc. And then a number of goals that you might want to achieve for for a particular species. So um, you want a measurable reduction of impact to a sustainable and tolerable level, uh, retention of benefits where possible, prevention of spread to unoccupied areas, sorry, there's a bit of a glitch there, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what they then did was link all of these together. So you have your categories of species, link these to the management tactics and practices to achieve particular goals. And uh, they had a, a big table in the paper, but I'm not going to try and show you that because it's just too many words and won't fit on the slide. But just to give you an example of, so this idea, uh, widespread invaders with significant benefits, that's this first category, uh, sorry, this category of here, so where they have high benefits and high area invaders. Um, and they suggested that the, the, goal, the goals for, for these species should be a measurable reduction of impacts to a sustainable and tolerable level, uh, retention of benefits when possible, the tactics you might apply are containment and impact reduction, um, and perhaps value addition, and the way you might do that is to employ these management practices. So it's all very nice and organized and uh, yeah, I think it's very nice. But when we come to grasses, um, if we look at the, the data that they used for uh, developing the national strategy for acacias, it's, it's a lot more complicated for grasses, I think. Um, so the species present in South Africa uh, 
we still we still don't really know what, what is out there, um, or at least we I don't think we have um, a complete or nearly complete checklist of what is out there. And I think this is largely because identification of grasses is so difficult. Um, and when people see a grass, they're like, uh, okay, that's a grass, and they, <laughs> they run away from it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to suggest some ways we might we might get around that. Um, and as a result, the distributions of many of these species are uncertain. Um, as I've said, impacts are poorly researched. Um, benefits are likely for, for some of these species, but I think also poorly quantified. So for example, uh, for biofuels, etc. It's really a, a new market that is opening up, and I think we, we're only really scratching the surface of, of, um, of the potential of these species. Um, and management tactics and practices are likely to be quite particular to this group because of the unique um, morphology and ecology of, of this, this group of plants. So, um, my suggestions, and please correct me later if you think I'm wrong, um, for what we should be focusing on, um, especially these two. So, looking at what we actually have in the country and trying to get a better idea of their distribution so that we can actually prioritize um, management um, and prevention of spread of, of these species. Um, so a few ideas of what I think a, a national working group could actually do. Um, so for trying to produce an inventory uh, of species in the country and getting an idea of their, their distributions, and Leslie, sorry, I've stolen quite a few of your figures for my, uh, <laughs> for my talk. Um, but we can use some databases that are already out there, so SAPIA, um, CIBIS, GBIF, iSpot, etc., to try and produce a, a, a provisional inventory uh, of species and, and their distributions. And perhaps then use this to design a, a field surveys uh, to get a better idea of what, what species we, we actually have. And then using um, this list, we might uh, try and draw up a, a key or perhaps a, a field guide um, of alien grasses in South Africa that we can actually then go and distribute to working for water and people out in the field so that we can actually start getting the information that, that we need. Um, now, if we want to quantify impact, I think at this stage uh, it's quite difficult, and we're, gonna, we're probably going to have to use uh, very simple measures. So, area invaded, uh, in that, uh, for that we might just use number of records, and number of quarter degree grid cells that are, uh, have occurrences, etc. But I also thought that perhaps uh, maybe a better way might be to look at the rate of increase. Um, of area invaded. So we have, not from these herbarium records and field sightings, we can actually look at uh, the change in time. And that might be a way to, to prioritize the species. Um, but as I said, I'm open to suggestions. And then I think another really important thing that a, a national working group might work on is uh, looking at possible invaders. So we know that alien grasses are a problem um, elsewhere in the world and we can use databases like the global compendium of weeds and GBIF etc to identify these species and we can then uh, conduct risk, risk assessments um, and species distribution modeling to get an idea of possible uh, future uh, invaders in the country. Um, and we can also look at uh, species that industry is uh, interested in introducing for biofuels and horticulture, etc. Um, to try and prevent uh, and mitigate um, future threats. And finally, I wanted to talk about the, the emerging issue of bamboos. And I, um, this is, a, I think, a very interesting, um, but perhaps also scary issue. Um, 
So already there are a number of um, bamboo plantations in the country, and these are actually often government uh, sponsored. So this is the Eastern Cape Development Corporation, and they are actually using this as a, a social upliftment um, program to uh, help communities generate income. And uh, there are a number of NGOs that are also growing bamboos for carbon capture. Um, you might have also seen they use bam bamboo for like bamboo flooring, um, furniture, etc., etc. So there's a lot of potential for bamboo, but um, some of the species that are being introduced are known to be invasive elsewhere. And I think there's been very little done to um, understand the potential impacts of, of these species. So um, basically now I, uh, and I think we need to we can carry on into the discussion yeah. session. Um, so I would like people's suggestions. I would also like people to volunteer to, to be part of the, the national working group. Um, and basically, uh, if, if you volunteer, we would like to uh, try and set a date to uh, have a workshop later in the year in Stellenbosch where we can actually flesh out a, a national strategy, or at least get the, the foundations for, for something like it. Um, and just to sort of structure it, I developed this table, um, and I wanted your opinions on you know what you thought uh, about these these different issues, whether they are actually important, or if you have other suggestions, and you know, I would like to just get some some names in here and have some dates. Okay, thank you. No, thanks very much. Um, we've got, uh, I think, let's do a couple of questions for Vernon, and then our CT is at quarter past ten. So we will have time between about five to ten, ten o'clock ish, until quarter past four, a sort of a uh, more open discussion that relates to all the speakers in this morning session. But I think, um, first, let's have a few questions for Vernon. Thank you very much. An interesting study. Um, what nurseries have you identified selling pampas grass? Because I can guarantee you it is uh, ornamental grasses are very, very popular within landscape design. Uh, especially from a water-wise perspective, um, there's a big, big. It's one of your money spinners in a nursery. But I can't guarantee. I can't guarantee you, but I can, guarantee you. Um, I can almost guarantee you yeah, that yeah. there's. You will not find pampas grass in a in a nursery. I will be interested to to, to see your actual list of yeah. nurseries. I mean, as I said, I, I've, I've just I've just started this, um, so no, I mean, I haven't I haven't seen. All right, so they they very really, really strict on that. I can guarantee. You. Can I ask about the impacts of bamboos elsewhere in the world? You said there were problems. Can you tell us a bit more about what the, what Sure. Like? I, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't gone into this in, in much detail, but um, I mean, if you go look on Global Compendium of Weeds, uh, you will find there are a number of, of, of bamboo species that are, that are actually on there. And um, I mean, John, do you know, I think on Reunion they have they have bamboos so, um, yeah. So I mean, there are a number of places in the world where, where they have been introduced and, and are problematic. So, so, but are we talking about plants that are a massive problem elsewhere in the world that we are actively growing? Um, well, that's the thing. I think we just don't know enough about it, and and that and that's actually why we need to to have uh, or to have a look at it. Dave. So the, from a sort of my perspective, as a sort of hydrological perspective, bamboo is typically bamboo is typically <coughs> bamboo is typically grow in areas where they actually have a lot of water available. Yeah. And outside of those areas they don't really grow well enough to be used as a crop. So from a water perspective they are an issue. Obviously if you're growing them in wet areas that's likely to be areas where they can get washed out, transported or otherwise. <coughs> and then uh, lastly they from my knowledge they're pretty awful to get rid of. They're like a runda but only bigger. You know, so. 
yeah, they also are not easy to eradicate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe bamboos or uh, grown as crops won't be, be an issue, but I think we need to set up guidelines for best practice um, so that so that they don't become a problem. If I can just add that the bamboo issue at the moment has been adopted by uh, Jeunesse Park of Food and Trees for Africa. She's a very high profile um, operator and her NGOs are very high profile. So it's a bit like the sort of, it's sort of the taking on our green brethren. Um, if you are going to take on the green brethren, make sure that you are fully unionized, you have a full workshop and your figures are absolutely correct. Uh, you walk into uh, taking on Jeunesse Park and her team in the Eastern Cape without the right figures and you will be decimated. Um, I just want to check, was there a question at the back? Um, Graham, you were next, and I well, think... Well, the most uh, stained grass is what we saw that because the Senate does it. My course started research in the early 70s, maybe in the late 60s, and they've documented a lot of these impacts that it has research program and results, a lot of big program going free working for water, during the cellar on table mountain. Okay. You must pick up a lot of information out of the research done on that. Sorry, which species did you say? The Senate does it, the Arc Mountain, the Senate did it, the Okay. Well, I'm going to take two more questions, and I think then we must have the open discussion. I think Leslie was next, and Brendan. Uh, just to say that, that there are many more grass species that have been proposed for listing on CARA and NEMBA because of conflicts of interest that have just been shelved. So there are a number of difficult grasses, like a curlew, for example. Yeah. That's something that is very invasive, but what do we do with it? We just, nobody knows really how to deal with it. And betava is another one of those that's been used a lot for um, promoted for erosion control. There are grower species, there are lowland species, there's a whole lot, and so we've got conflicts of interest. That's going to be one of your big challenges. Yeah. And on Kikuyu, the nursery industry have called for its banning because they believe they've got to replace the Kikuyu on every single sports ground in the country. It's going to be boom time for them. So the nursery industry, they could go as quickly as possible. Okay, last question for Vernon. It's not a question, it's just a point for discussion. Because what I want to say is uh, there's another tree called Moringa, which I don't know if most of the colleagues who are here uh, have heard about it. And I would like maybe colleagues from maybe some bit to start looking into the possibility of it being better because most of the areas where you go, you hear about even the rural areas, people are selling the, that tree. The seedlings and even the powder saying is very good tree for medicine. And a colleague from forestry even came to us saying if we, we can allow people to plant it. And so there's a lot of things happening outside. And also, I just want to hear if there's regarding the prickle pear, because I noticed a month ago when I was driving around Tanin, a former plantation. Is now newly planted by prickle pea, a couple of hectares. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else they say about that, just uh, general. Yeah, I think it sort of relates to this issue of potential conflicts where you've got a plant that's useful as well as quite invasive. And uh, yeah, I don't know, John, do we have a ringer on our list from the other day? We may. It's not one. Okay, all right. Great, thank you very much.